Good morning again, friends. Um, before we get in the word, let me pray real quick. Dear God, please anoint this message and let every word that I speak touch the hearts of those that hear it. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Stop arguing with God. It's a problem I've had. It's a problem a lot of us have. We want to act like we're not called to do something, so we argue with God about it. You can feel him calling you to do something in your life, and you keep putting it off, claiming that you're not the one to do it. And it's not true. It's not true. We can do anything through Christ that strengthens us. So many times we argue with God in our lives, saying like Moses did, that we cannot or aren't able to do the things that the Lord has wanted us to begin in this life on earth. Exodus 4, 1 through 12, this was Moses before he became the great man of God and led the Jews out of Egypt. He was trying to argue with God right here. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not listen to me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand and he said a rod and he said cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from before it I wonder how many things that we look look at that God tells us to do and we keep saying we can't do it but God's like yes you can like watch just just try it and the Lord said unto Moses but put forth thine hand and take it by the tail, and he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. And right here it shows a lot of times people need signs. Even God said this back in the days of Moses. They need to see the signs of power to believe. And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again. And plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass that they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, which thou takest of the river, shall become blood upon dry land. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent in speech, neither hitherto nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb or deaf, or the seen or the blind? Have not I, Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Have Moses had not followed God's plan, he would have never split the Red Sea, one of the greatest miracles ever recorded in the Scripture. This miracle happened only ten chapters after Moses claimed that the people wouldn't listen to what God had told them to preach. But they obviously did, because he led a whole nation out to the Holy Land and called him to do the things that he called them to do, he kept claiming that they wouldn't listen, but they did listen because God was with them. We, like Moses, resist the direction God leads us to travel and end up missing our Red Sea open for us. It won't part unless we go. We won't see the breakthrough and fulfillment of God's plan if we keep making excuses not to go. I wonder how many things stay covered up by refusing to go God's way in our lives? How many times have we kept our Red Sea closed? <clears throat> How many times have we denied what God has told us to do? The opening of our Red Sea is not going to happen until we go and do what God told us to do. 
how can we tell God we can't do something when he told us to do it? It's kind of a ludicrous statement, but we're scared or whatever. The more we run from the way God shows, the farther we get from the miracles God has in store for us. Some of us could be leaders. Some of us could be businessmen, doctors, missionaries, lawyers, designers, or singers. But we don't listen to God and continue to keep our sea shut up as tight as a COVID lockdown. I've been guilty as anybody of this saying to God, I can't do this in my life. I can't do that. I'm not talented enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. Making excuses why I'm not qualified. I'm not smart enough. I'm not rich enough. I'm not outgoing enough. I'm not well enough. I'm not educated enough. Making these type of excuses will continue to limit the plans God has for us. And it's sad and it's it's just limiting our ability that God wants us to step into. It took Jonah in the Bible to be swallowed by a fish before he listened to God and stopped making excuses as to why he couldn't go preach what God told him to at the city of Nineveh. We should be casting out demons, helping the sick and those in need, but for the most part we keep telling God these excuses as to why we aren't the ones to be doing this work. We keep our seas closed and put the call God wants for us on hold. How long are we going to deny what God's telling us to begin doing? How many more years before we listen and walk through our Red Sea? Don't make any more excuses. Don't argue anymore with the call God has given you to accomplish. Don't spend your life being a Jonah and facing your fish experience before you listen to the plan God had for you. If Moses had not listened to God, he would have never seen the glory of God on the mountaintop. He would have never led the Jews out of Egypt. And he would have never fulfilled the call on his life and become one of the greatest men in the Bible. Don't be a Jonah. Be a Moses. So many of us, so many of us spend most of our time making excuses. And we could be doing the most greatest things in the kingdom of God. There's so many people that could be saved if we would just listen and go and do what God told us to do. I did this for many years myself. I said, I'm too sick. How am I going to preach? I can barely even get out of bed. I'm not a preacher. I haven't gone to Bible school. I don't know what I'm like, how to make these sermons. But I do know the scriptures. And I've been in church for a long time. And I've been taught under many good teachers. And one day I was watching another preacher, and he was like, you know, you just go and you start preaching on any platform you have. So I picked up my phone, I picked up my Bible, I got down on my knees and prayed to God, and I went and started making sermons. And I'm not the best preacher by any means, but I'm not trying to be the best. I'm trying to do what God told me to do what God has called us all to do, to go and spread the message of Christ. And as long as I'm doing that, God's going to bless whatever is happening. We could be going through the greatest trial, mental, physical, emotional, financial, does not matter. We cannot make that as an excuse to why we cannot follow God's call for our life. Moses went through all kinds of stuff in his life. The Jews betrayed him because he, He killed an Egyptian trying to protect his Jewish brothers, and then they ratted him out to the Egyptians. He had to go flee for years. For years of his life. And he could have used that as an excuse, too. He could have been like, God, you know, I'm not going to help these people. They straight ratted me out to the people that enslaved us. But no. He ended up listening. Don't take as long as Jonah did to where you have to have something so drastic like a well or a big fish or whatever creature from the sea swallowed him exactly don't take that point in your life do it now do it now have the blessings of God in your life now don't wait for a disaster to be blessed don't wait for a disaster to have your red sea open up for you walk through these trials with God 
Do what he's called you to do. He may have called you to open up an orphanage. He may have called you to adopt some kids. He may have called you to be out on the streets handing out food. Only you know in your heart what God has called you to do. Stop making excuses. Stop being a Jonah. Live life as Moses and follow God into the mountaintop and through the Red Sea. Dear God, I ask healing. I ask breakthrough. I ask deliverance upon everyone watching. May your word settle in their hearts and minds. And may the peace of Jesus Christ fill us all. Be blessed. Have a great day, friends. God bless you guys.